Lord and Father, we again come to you and thank you so much that we have, we have a church here, we have a church here that loves the Lord. We thank you so much for, for, the, for, the, for the abundance of talent that you gave our congregation here, that, that, we, can, that we can teach and, and learn more and more about you. But I would always have to, to, to rely on the pastor that we love so much. And, and we thank you so much for Keith, and may we listen very attentively today and listen to every word and take it in our heart, pray about it, and then share it with others. And we thank you so much. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> amen. So, um, I'm going to start off with a little bit of a joke. Uh, I don't know how well this will work, but here goes. A painter walked into an art gallery and asked the owner, how his paintings were doing? The owner replied, I have good news and bad news. The good news is someone walked in this morning and asked if your paintings would increase in value when you die. The painter, and when I told him yes, he bought every last one of them. And the painter said, well, that is good news. So what's the bad news? The uh, owner said, that person that bought all those paintings was your doctor. You know, it's an interesting thing. There are thousands of good news, bad news jokes out there. And most of the theme of good news, bad ju news jokes is that Usually the bad news makes the good news bad, too. Um, today we are going to be looking at bad news and good news. I'm changing the order for a reason. Uh, for the last couple of meetings that we did, Brother Dick has been teaching from Genesis 3 and 4 on how, first of all, sin entered the world, and then how it continued where Cain killed his brother Abel, and the curse that sin has in this world. But that's not even the half of the story. Because one of the things that we have to understand, or we have to get our heads wrapped around is, we are going to continue forever, even when our body dies. Everyone, saved, unsaved, there is an eternal nature to who we are. That part of us, that soul, will exist forever, for billions of years. And even after billions of years, it will just have begun. Jesus draws Jesus draws a very clear and unambiguous picture of what happened, what will happen on the final day of judgment. He does this in Matthew 13, 47 to 50. And he says this, he's talking about different aspects of the kingdom of God and he says this in verse starting at verse 47 again the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea and gathering fish of every kind and when it is filled they drew it on the beach they sat down and gathered the good fish into containers but the bad fish they threw away so it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth and take out every take out the wicked from among the righteous, and he will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Revelation 21.8 says the same thing. Paul, I mean, John, um, 
in his vision where he wrote down the prophecy of the end days. He says this in Revelation 21.8, But the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters. Man, that sounds like a horrible, horrible list of people. And all liars. How many of us in this room have told at least one lie? There we go. Every one of us. They will, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So here we see some terribly horrible bad news. You've heard me talk in the past about heaven, how looking forward, even after a billion years, it'll have just begun. Well, those who don't know Jesus look forward to the same billion years where it will have just begun, but in their case, it will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The first two chapters of Romans talk about our standing before God as unsaved people. In chapter 1, he discusses what about the Gentiles. And he shows that the Gentiles have no right to God's righteousness. And then he goes on about his brothers in Israel in chapter 2, where he then says, even with the law and trying to live by the law, his fellow brothers have no standing before God and that they are all judged. He draws a conclusion in chapter 3. I'm going to read this passage. It's chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, verses 10 to 20. And he says this. Starting at verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no, none who seeks God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. There is no one who does good. There is not even one. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they keep deceiving. The poison of asps is on their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are their paths, and the path of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. More and more we're seeing this throughout the world today. It's like a, a snowball rolling down the hill where evil is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and we're seeing this happening before our very eyes. And it's not just this slow creep now. It is a freight train. I'll continue in verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be closed and all the world may become accountable to God. There it goes. We are accountable to God. Because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. That is 
terribly horrible bad news. Paul is saying, we have no standing. We deserve God's wrath. Jesus described that final day of judgment as those who do not know him will experience that wrath, and that wrath will never stop. Praise the Lord, Paul doesn't leave us. But he gives us wonderfully great good news. And he starts right at that very next verse. In verse 21 to 26, Paul continues. And he said, but now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace, through the redemption, which is in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly. As a propitiation in his blood, through faith, this was to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed for the demonstration, I say, of his righteousness at the present time so that he would be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Christ. So what Paul is getting at here is that when Jesus died on the cross, he died to take the wrath of God for me, for you, for anyone who has faith in him. Jesus said to Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So we see here, we deserve wrath. Jesus took that wrath. As I said earlier, Brother Dick talked about how sin got here and how it progressed and how, as we see in the world right now, it has left a terrible mark. And that terrible mark stains every one of us. And the only way can get rid of that stain is to receive Christ. And my prayer for those who may be watching on YouTube is that they come to grips with this. That they will seek Christ while it is still day that they would come to know him and the joy that is there for those who trust in Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time we can come and learn from your word. We thank you for the grace and peace that you can give to us, Lord. That you would help us to understand and to seek you out and to seek to be more.
more like you each day that we might be Christ before a watching world. In Jesus' name.